Okay, hey folks, um, seeing still uh, people still coming in. So thank you for, for joining us today. It's great to see that uh, we've got a lot of people interested in participating in the summit and hopefully we can um, get any and all of your questions answered today. Uh, my name is Mick and I'm here with uh, Darren and Fran as well from programs and comms team at CBRC. And we're also working this year to put together uh, this year's conference. So um, I will just give a quick um, acknowledgement before we jump into our discussion, um, just to acknowledge and allow space and time for us to think about the unceded and ancestral traditional and territories of First Nations people that we're currently occupying and working on. Presenters of today's session are situated on the unceded territories of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh First Nations, currently known as Vancouver, the unceded Anishinaabe Algonquin Territory, known as Ottawa, as well as the traditional territories of the Wendat, Anishinaabe, Haudenosaunee, Métis, and the Mississaugas of the New Credit First Nation, currently known as Toronto or Toronto. We acknowledge this and also have to a little bit go past that. We encourage that everyone to keep these um, truths in your life, your daily work, so that we can continue to decolonize ourselves and our systems as best we can. Uh, so I'll just go over a couple of housekeeping items before we um, move on. Today's session will be recorded in order for us to allow folks to watch it later on. So with that in mind, uh, your cameras are completely optional. Feel free to keep them on or off. Um, we also ask that folks uh, save questions until the end of our session, or you can also type them in the chat. And just to you know, share the space and the time with everyone being considerate as well. And also French support is available. If you have any questions or need any clarification in French, please let us know. And I'll just allow um, Francesco to introduce himself quickly and to just reshare some housekeeping items in French. Euh, bonjour tout le monde. Je ne sais pas si c'est des francophones dans la salle aujourd'hui, mais si oui, euh, comme Mick l'a dit, on va pouvoir vous offrir du soutien en français. Donc, un peu euh, les règles rapides d'aujourd'hui, on va enregistrer cette séance. Donc, euh, soyez au courant de ça. Vous n'êtes pas obligé d'avoir votre caméra si vous ne voulez pas. Euh, comme on l'a mentionné, il va y avoir du soutien en français. Et puis, veuillez aussi garder vos questions pour la fin ou les écrire dans le chat pour qu'on puisse partager le temps et l'espace ici aujourd'hui. Cool, merci, uh, And then I'll just go over a little rundown of today's session. So we'll do a little overview of some CBRC and summit history, and then we'll talk about the format of this year's conference, talk about the call for proposals and our theme, and then we'll also have some insight from some past uh, summit presenters as well joining us today, so that will be great. And then we'll allow some time for questions. And yeah, um, is there anything anyone else wants to add? If not, I'll hand it over to Darren to get us going. Great. Thank you, Mick. Thank you, Fran. Um, so I know that some folks are uh, somewhat familiar with the summit and some folks may not be too familiar with the summit, but are intrigued um, and are thinking about putting together a proposal for the summit. So I'll just explain a bit about the history of the summit and CBRC, the organization that is organizing the summit. CBRC, we are a community-based research center. We promote the health of people of diverse sexualities and genders through research and intervention development. The summit is a program of ours that we've uh, began since 2005. Um, it is a big, big conference um, that we call our annual knowledge exchange and capacity building conference um, on the health of queer folks and people of diverse sexualities and gender. So every year, the summit brings together their researchers, service providers, community members and organizations from across Canada to present the latest in queer trans to spirit health research uh, program service and advocacy. And all that really just means that it's a big queer time with all of your queer pals um, talking about research or programs that's advancing the health of folks in our community. And it is for um, any and all folks of like any profession, so service providers, um, researchers, students, community members, volunteers, um, anyone who is interested in these topics or has something that they want to share with uh, our communities, uh, you're all welcome to attend or join or even present. Um, and to give you a bit more idea of what gets talked about at the summit, the discussions really vary um, year to year and session to session um, from HIV to 
um, other SDBBIs, um, sexual health, mental health, substance use, gender affirming care, um, health advocacy, and more. So anything that pertains to the health of queer folks and people of diverse genders and sexualities is fair game to discuss and talk about at the summit. Um, historically, a lot of our conferences and sessions were geared towards HIV. Um, and over the many years since 2005, uh, we have seen a lot more diversity in the topics um, and understanding that um, when it comes to our health, uh, HIV and even just sexual health is just one component of our overall holistic health. And so we welcome discussions, conversations and workshops on any parts of our queer health. Um, and then to give you some more information about uh, Summit 2022. So this is a special year because for the past two years, we've been doing only virtual summit. And um, this year in 2022, with some restrictions um, being more lax now, and the opportunity to meet in person has become available again, our summit this year is going to be both uh, virtual and in person. Uh, the virtual component of the summit happening from October 17th to 26th, and then the in-person presentation slash activities, including like workshops and panels and things like that, that is October 27th and 28th, and it will happen in Vancouver, BC at the Coast Coal Harbor Vancouver Hotel. Um, in a lot of our write-ups for talking about the summit format, you may have seen the word hybrid been used, and um, there may be some confusion around, around what is a hybrid summit. And so what we mean by that is that there is a virtual component and an in-person component, and these two um, parts of summit are happening um, in an asynchronous fashion, where there's the virtual components of summit um, that will take place nationally over online. Um, and over our laptops or devices, and then the in-person components of it happening in Vancouver. And this in-person component um, is not one that's going to be synchronized virtually, uh, meaning uh, we don't yet have uh, plans to um, broadcast what happens in person in a virtual sense, except for that the in-person presentations and activities will be recorded um, for folks to check out later um, in our summit content library online, if that makes sense. So I'll just take a pause there for folks to take that in. A lot of other questions that we've been getting around the summit, um, because this is a virtual and in-person summit, is around cost and fees. So just like the past two years, the virtual component of summit is free for all attendees. Um, so for the week of virtual programming, um, registration just means uh, going online and um, telling us your name and your email, and then you are registered for the virtual activities of summit. For in-person summit, um, there is a fee of either $100 a day for community members, students, nonprofit organizations, and other uh, community folks, or $200 a day uh, for professionals, um, healthcare service providers, representatives of government agencies, etc. cetera. Um, and there is a 25% discount for presenters. And this 25% discount is for presenters of uh, the virtual component of Summit and the in-person component of Summit. So if you are presenting virtually um, and you want to attend in-person Summit, you will still get the 25% discount, um, again, for presenters. Registration for Summit um, has not begun yet, and it will um be launched sometime early September and so if you're looking around our um, website um and maybe you're watching this recording info session and you can't find the registration page it's because it's not out yet but it will be um in September and now I get into like the more nitty-gritty parts of uh summit 2022 so um previous this theme for this year is pushing possibilities. It is 
a culmination and kind of um, a build up from what we had as our themes from previous years, uh, which is disrupt and reconstruct and resistance and responsibility. So all things have all, all of our summit uh, in the past few years have led to this theme where we this year we are challenging folks to think about the limits that we have on our research and our programs and the ways in which we can push past these limits um, for investing so that we can investigate all the best possible outcomes for health equity uh, while also providing support and care for each other in our own ways and so this year for our proposals we're really challenging folks to think about um, in the work that we do, how are we pushing the possibilities in terms of how we access healthcare, in terms of how our community can, how our communities can thrive um, moving forward in 2022. So pretty general, pretty vague, you can play around with this theme um, in your own creative ways, and you can use it to think critically about your work and research. And we really look forward to seeing how you're connecting this theme to your work and research, um, as we know that um, this, this one is one that um, might be challenging, but we know that it'll, uh, you'll come up with great answers for us when we read um, how this theme connects to your work. Okay, and so now I have some quick um, information about the coffer proposals. Again, if I don't cover everything here, there is a question and answer period um, after we hear from past presenters talking about their insights and experiences. Um, and also, if I don't cover everything here and you happen to not get a chance to ask us questions at the um, tail end of this uh, info session, please contact me. My, in my contact information is at the bottom of this slide. I apologize that this is a text heavy slide, um, but there is a, a lot of information that I want to cover in terms of the call for proposals. The call for proposals is currently launched. Um, and so if you are someone who uh, is thinking about presenting at the summit, um, this information would be relevant to you. So first off, everyone and anyone is welcome to submit a proposal for either the in-person or virtual component of the summit. Um, if you are not sure if you wanna do in-person or virtual, there's also an option where you select that both options are okay for you. And then the summit um, committee will um, decide what would work best for your um, presentation if you get selected. So when I say everyone and anyone, I am including staff and or volunteers, uh, researchers and or students, health and or service providers, community or grassroots organizers, government staff, policymakers, and 2S LGBTQ plus community members. So again, anyone or everyone who has anything that they would like to say or present uh, or share with our summit audience, you're more than welcome to submit a call for proposals. We are inviting proposals for short oral presentations, panels or roundtable discussions, workshops, or an alternative format that you propose. Um, and so that is in consideration of folks who may have um, a very interesting topic or research or work that they want to present on, um, but want to do it in a way that's not listed here. Um, you're more than welcome to let us know how you would like to present your information to us at the summit or how you would like that information to be shared. Uh, I don't have listed here post or presentation, but that's also a possibility for um, presenters as well, if you would just like to submit a poster um, for the summit as well. Um, and just so, just so folks know, all of the options listed here, um, short oral presentation, panels or roundtable discussions, workshops, these are all options that you can select whether you are presenting individually or as part of a group or as part of a team. Um, there's also a possibility that when you submit your call for, uh, when you submit your proposal to the summit, um, we on the summit programming team uh, may select you and put you as part of a panel with other folks who are presenting similar work or work that is complementary to your own. And so even if you are not sure if you are eligible for like a panel um, or presenting with a team, 
um, just submit a proposal anyways, and we can help you figure out uh, those details or we can work with you to figure out those details. Submissions can be based on research, programming, policy initiatives, advocacy, activism, art-based approaches, grassroots responses, and or community based actions engaging to us LGBTQ people in Canada or abroad. So again, pretty wide range of what we accept um, as um, uh, information and presentations for the summit. The deadline is August 7th at midnight. So um, you have a bit of time, not too much time. Um, so keep that in mind. All applicants will be notified by August 30th, whether you're successfully selected to present at the summit or not, uh, we'll let you know either way. And so another thing I wanna note here is that um, while you can find our submission form online, it's a Google form that you'll have to fill out. Many folks have also asked me if they can see all of the questions beforehand before submitting it in a Google form. And the answer to that is yes. You'll just have to contact me. My email is at the bottom of this page, and I will send you a document with the questions listed out so that you can see all the questions before you type it out into the Google form. Um, because the thing with the form is that um, you can see half of the questions and then you have to hit submit, and then you see the other half of the questions and then you hit submit and that's like the final thing. But if you want, if you're the type of person that wants to like prepare your answers like in another document before you send it all in, um, I can send you um, all of the questions. You just have to contact me and let me know. And so that's mostly it. I just wanna take a quick break here if there's any questions or anything before I hand it over to um, our past presenters to give insight. Uh, but I'll just give a quick brief pause here and also know that we will be taking more questions at the end. Um, but if there's anything really, really pressing at this point, um, let me know. Uh, Peter's raised their hand. Um, I'll let you ask a quick question, Peter. Maybe it's not. Um, okay, so we can use the chat. So maybe use the Q&A uh, box instead. Um, there's one question that I've received that says, can we give our email to Darren now to receive the questions of the form? Yes, you can. Um, let me know in the Q&A form or the chat. I'll make a note of your name and contact information, um, and I'll send you the form at the end of this uh, session. Um, sorry, Peter, I see that your hand is up, but I am not tech savvy enough to get you to... Oh, why don't you have a link to the Google questions? That's a great question. That is something that we're working on. Um, linking to the Google questions. Um, I don't know when we will have that sorted out. So in the meanwhile, um, I will send you the Google form, but if you're watching this recording and you already see that the uh, questions are, or the document is up, then yes, feel free to use that as well. That's um, the same form that I'm sending to folks. Um, okay, cool. So I am taking notes of all of your emails um, in the Q&A. Um, section. Um, in the meanwhile, though, um, oh, we said there's one more question I'll answer here. Short oral presentations, seven minutes, same as last year. Uh, yes, um, that is the same time frame as um, last year's, the seven to 10 minute um, oral presentations. Um, and there are, this is I think also listed out in the um, submission form, um, but there are other alternatives if you want to do a longer presentation, such as like a workshop or a roundtable discussion, things like that. But for the short oral presentations, the time frame is seven to ten minutes. Okay, I do want to give a chance for our past presenters to give some insight on um, their their presentation they're presenting at past summit, and so I'm first going to call on Finn. Finn St. Denis, who is a research and evaluation coordinator at the Queer and Trans 
Health Collective in Edmonton. Finn presented at the summit back in 2019, I believe, uh, which was an in-person summit. And so Finn, I'll pass the mic over to you. Awesome, thanks, Stern. Uh, yeah, so um, Vincent and Dennis, I use they, them pronouns. Uh, like Darren said, I'm the research and evaluation coordinator at the Queer and Trans Health Collective uh, in so-called Edmonton, or I'm a Skykon Sky Con in Treaty 6 territory. Uh, it's the home of the Cree, Dene, Salty, Blackfoot, and Nakota Sioux, and we are in Métis Region 4. Uh, the first summit I attended was in 2018, and I first presented at summit in 2019, uh, along with the investigators. For those of you who aren't familiar with investigators, it's a community-based research mentorship program created by the CBRC, uh, which runs across the country, and participants are taught about research methods, uh, with a focus on community-based anti-oppressive research approaches, and they have the opportunity to conduct their own original research uh, throughout the program. So I coordinate the Alberta-based uh, investigators. While well, I've been at uh, more recent summits, I'll be focusing mostly on my experience in 2019 um, as it was the last in-person summit, um, and I believe there's a couple of folks who'll be sharing their experiences with the virtual summit. Uh, so the theme in 2019 was clearing healthcare access and accessibility. Uh, each of the participants in the investigators program had the opportunity to conduct their own analyses uh, on data from the CDRC Sex Now survey. Our presentation, Community Driven Responses to Queer and Trans Research Gaps, uh, explored topics like mental health inequities within the community in Alberta and the impact of the U equals U or Undetectable equals Untransmittable campaign on reducing HIV stigma. As we've taken a community based approach um, and really applied an intersectional lens to our research, there is a clear connection for us between the work that we've done and the theme of that year's summit. Uh, because we were inherently clearing our examination of access and accessibility to health and wellness through our methodology. I found that CBRC and Summit uh, take a more kind of holistic approach to the idea of healthcare and what it means to support health and wellness for the 2S LGBTQIA plus community. Uh, so although some of our topics weren't directly looking at healthcare in like the traditional sense of the word, we were still really quite topical. Uh, our presentation was incredibly well received. Uh, Summit is the most supportive conference I personally have attended. Uh, we had phenomenal support for the investigators presentation, which was amazing because for many of the folks who were presenting, uh, it was their first time at a conference. Um, and I also found there to be kind of a similar level of support for many of the other panels, talks and workshops that I attended. Uh, unlike some academic conferences I've been at where sometimes I can feel kind of like folks are there to challenge presenters, the questions we received, we received um, uh, after our presentation, I felt came from like a really genuine place of curiosity and engagement. Um, overall, the audience seemed really well informed on the topics we were presenting on um, and we were able to engage in meaningful dialogues, both during the question and answer period, as well as during the evening mixer, which for me is one of the best parts of in-person summit. Uh, we were given ideas for further research, talk through possible solutions to some of the challenges facing the community we'd identified, uh, and came away feeling really reinvigorated. Um, yeah, I'm honestly just so excited to be getting back to Summit in person. Um, and if you're someone who's on the fence about submitting a proposal, I would say that you should just do it. Uh, it's an incredible opportunity to meet folks across the country um, doing amazing work with 2S LGBTQIA plus health and well-being. Uh, the other great thing is that it's also a really supportive environment to receive feedback from an audience that's deeply engaged in 2S LGBTQIA plus research, uh, which is a rare opportunity. For me, this is really what sets Summit apart from other conferences. Uh, as a queer researcher, I find that I'm often the minority in that in a space, um, and it's really empowering to present and learn in an environment that is made up of 2S LGBTQIA folks um, and allies. So yeah, I think that's pretty much it for me, Darren. Um, but if anyone has any questions kind of about um, my experience at Summit, I know we are a little different having been with the investigators um, than on our own, but um, yeah, it was a really, really great experience and I am excited to see some new folks there. Cool. 
Thank you so much, Finn, for sharing all of that. Um, I, I Maybe I'll hold the question specifically to you until after all of the um, presenters have spoken um, because they might be duplicates. So next I'm gonna call on Max Stewart uh, from the Dalai, Dalai Lama School of Public Health, who was a presenter uh, from last year's summit. Yeah, hi everyone, and thank you, Darren. Uh, so I work at the Dalai Lama School of Public Health with Dr. Daniel Grace as his research coordinator, but I have an interesting positionality where my last, so I participated in the 2020 summit and the 2021 summit. In the 2020 summit, I was a peer researcher at the Dalai Lama School of Public Health. So I feel like I have two, I was in two kind of different roles, which really impacted the way that I presented at the summit um, in both years. So I'm gonna kind of give a little bit of insight about maybe like mentorship through the summit and what that kind of role is for me and how I practice that within my own team. Um, and I also noticed a question in the Q&A that I will answer just based on my past experiences in the summit as well. Um, but just to start, uh, so I have been working on a study with the Get Checked Online team in British Columbia and translating it to Ontario for the past three years, almost three years now. Um, and that's the data that we've been working with to bring to the summit. And when we sat down to kind of see like, what can we do with this data? The summit seemed like the obvious place to go because we were using community-based participatory research methods. And we looked at the community-based summit and we said, this is the perfect place for this. And it seemed kind of a little bit less intimidating than maybe someone's first academic conference because with peer research we brought people from the community who might not necessarily have like an academic background who might not necessarily have the engagement in the community that someone uh, who's a research coordinator or who works within community organizations these are just people who are part of the 2s lgbtq plus community so our first thought was the summit seems like a really kind of low barrier to access place to bring our presentation and get really good feedback. And that's exactly what happened. Um, so both years were virtual, obviously, because um, this is the first one since 2019 that will not be virtual. And I really like the virtual component of it because we were able to pre-record our presentation. And I'm not sure if that's going to be the same for the virtual piece this year. But the pre-recording, I think, just took kind of like all the stress off of our shoulders when it came to the like presenting anxiety. So if you feel like you are really unsure on the fence about like, I don't know if I can present in person, like that seems really intimidating to me. If it is still the same like pre-recorded version of um, the summit, I would definitely recommend like maybe exploring that route because I remember just thinking like, we can edit this, we can like cut down on like the ums and the ahs and like that really like cut down our runtime. <laughs> I think our original runtime was like 18 minutes for a short oral presentation. And we were like able to bring it down to like seven to 10 um, through like that editing process, which was like a really big relief because I've been in in-person conferences in my academic career where like you've been sitting in a room with someone and they've been going on and like are not picking up the moderator cues to like it's maybe time to stop. Um, so that was kind of a really great place for us with the virtual summit. Um, and in our first year, we just kind of presented our general data from like the study because we had just finished recruitment and data analysis. And in the second year, we got to be a little bit more specific with our interests so my specific interest is in queer or in trans health specifically and how queer trans people navigate sti stbbi testing so being able to kind of tailor our specific interest to the summit was also really gratifying and we were able to put together so there's three people on my team and we we're able to put together a panel where we all discussed the ways that our research intersected and where kind of the differences were so that was kind of what we brought to the summit and as now, as the research coordinator, I think it's just a great place to bring the peer researchers I work with to kind of feel that sense of community, to get to know there's some people who I think in the field are like bigger names who everyone knows or everyone kind of like is in a circle with and getting them to interact or see the names of everyone else on the in the summit is a really good way to build community, even if it's just a name on the screen um, at a certain point. 
So that was my experience. I did see a question um, about French language and the summit. So virtually, um, it was a lot easier because we were able to have uh, captions and like transcription. And I found that the summit did a really good job of having maybe not like equal act, like equal French and English representation, but like a very good amount of French um, presentations, including Florence Ashley, who was one of the keynotes last year, who did her uh, presentation entirely in French. And that was my experience. And I would say that I found the French offerings well attended. Um, but I will finish it there and just say that if you're thinking about doing a summit, I think that there is now multiple ways to engage and you can engage in whatever level feels comfortable for you. And I think that that is kind of the framework of community research and you should definitely do it. Thank you so much, Mac, for that insight. Um, and I just wanna, because I'm not sure if, if folks can actually like read the questions that people submit to the Q&A. So I'll just also um, reiterate here that the question was, um, is it worth it to present in French? Meaning, is there an audience for French presentations or will it be delivered to an almost empty room? Um, and so just adding to uh, what Mac has explained in the um, in-person components of the summit, we do have um, live translations for French presentations. And so it will most likely not be an empty room, um, but also given that there are a lot of English speaking and Anglophones and folks who only understand English um, come to Summit, um, the audience that you might be presenting to in French are folks who need French translation. Um, but from what I've seen in the past with in-person, um, folks are keen to um, participate and listen to your presentation uh, regardless of language and um, that we have folks are, um, I wouldn't say excited, but folks are um, okay with um, um, listening to presentations via a translation or if it's virtual um, via captions or, um, or subtitles. So um, I don't know if that clarifies your question or clarifies an answer in any way. I, I, I mean, I don't know if I can uh, fully say whether or not it's worth it to present in French because that might be just a bit too objective for me to say, but I will say that the um, the uh, processes are in place for um, French presentations to be understood by uh, folks who don't understand French um, attending the summit. Um, I don't know, Fran, if you have anything you wanted to add particularly on that question. Um, I guess so. En tant que francophone, je dirais que oui, ça vaut la peine de, de présenter en français au sommet. C'est surtout un, une occasion de présenter à l'échelle nationale. Donc, c'est peut-être euh, un milieu plus anglophone, mais c'est quand même quelque chose de très valorisant et de, de récompensant. So, just saying that even if it's not like, you know, majority French, it's still a, a national uh, scene that you can present at. And so, it's a great opportunity to reach more people than you would have at regional conferences. And I think that CBRC is also trying really hard to expand our services and our well our programs for uh, francophones. So we really encourage uh, francophones to take part. Great, thanks for that, Fran. Um, okay, so I do have one more uh, guest speaker, Tara Shanity, who couldn't make it today, but she did send us a video um, because she anticipated having uh, connection problems. Um, so I do have a video that I would like to share uh, with the group, um, just um, speaking to Tara's experience in presenting in the last year. Tara is a postdoctorate fellow at uh, University of Montreal and um, has experience in presenting at the summit virtually uh, in 2021. So just give me one second and I'll share this short video with you. Darren, I believe the uh, folks can't hear the uh, video. 
Oh, folks cannot hear the video. Um, give me one sec. Give me one sec. I'm going to try and share it in a different way. Could people hear that? No, I couldn't. Uh, Kirk said maybe uh, clicking on share audio in the share video menu. Okay. One sec. Okay, if this doesn't work out, I might just have to skip this video, unfortunately. Um, I'm just gonna do this one more try. I couldn't find a share audio version, but I'm gonna play like two seconds of the video, folks. Let me know if you can hear anything. No, okay. Uh, okay, unfortunately, then I cannot figure this out, but that's okay. Um, I guess then I'll just move on to uh, further questions from attendees. Um, if you are wondering or if you're curious about anything, if you have questions specifically for Finn or Mac, um, let us know. Darren, I think we had a question about whether we know if the virtual portions will be pre-recorded yet or not. Uh, yes. Has it been decided whether or not the virtual presentations can be pre-recorded this year? Um, I think that the answer is yes. Uh, Jose, are you able to clarify this one? That still hasn't been uh, confirmed for the uh, for the virtual version. Probably we'll be able to offer that, but uh, we will be making all that uh, confirmation very soon. Okay, so unconfirmed, but I mean, since Mac, you were speaking it up as such a valuable um, option, uh, we will likely see what we can do on that front. Um, Hold on, I am getting a long question, so I'm just gonna read through it. Oh, this is more of a comment than a question. Um, so I guess while I'm waiting for more questions to come in, my question for Finn and Mac um, is, I mean, Finn, I think, I think you've talked about this a little bit, but I wonder if you can both speak more to how you, felt the engagement was with um, Summit attendees in terms of like their knowledge level on the work that you presented. Um, like was, was this an audience that you felt like you had to like start from scratch in terms of um, building up the knowledge level? Could you like, at what level should presenters, I guess, expect the audience should be at in terms of knowledge of what you were presenting? Uh, Finn, you go first. Sure, yeah, so I think, Kind of, I kind of spoke to it a bit, but um, in terms of having a general understanding of like the queer and trans community, like that's something you can assume you've got a solid baseline for, which is great. Not having to spend, you know, time in your presentation sort of setting that up and being able to really just like focus on the actual core kind of content, um, and then thinking about sort of the content of our presentations itself um you know like we gave kind of basic information but we're able to assume a fairly good understanding of sort of common uh to us lgbtqia plus health topics so like we were looking at the undetectable equals untransmittable campaign um so we kind of assumed that folks had a a general baseline knowledge of um, 
kind of where research was at um, with advancements in HIV treatment and care, especially because there were other presentations on the topic um, at Summit. So we weren't kind of the only presenters talking about it. Um, so I think, yeah, I think you can kind of assume that there is a general understanding of, of queer and trans health. Yeah, I can follow that up and say that my answer is pretty much the exact same. Um, you know, I wouldn't take the time to explain like what a trans person is or like the different forms of transition or anything like that, because I would assume that most people coming to the conference would either know that or have the resources within their own organizations or within themselves to do that work. Um, but for example, we were talking about online testing. I in one of our presentations. So I might go and explain like, here is the method of online testing we're talking about and kind of lay out like our specific context that we were speaking in. But yeah, and the thing that I also kind of consider when giving a presentation at the summit is there's so many really interesting and cool panels that people, if they're gravitating towards yours, is probably for a specific reason. Um, mm -hmm. So they probably know like a little bit about the topic and want to know more, or maybe this is like actually the topic that they're very interested in and they want to come and see what you're saying about it. So there's generally kind of a sense that people know what you're talking about and are just there to learn um, about the specific context of what you're speaking in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those are great answers. And then if I can also just keep bugging both of you for a sec, I'm wondering if you can speak a bit on um, beyond just like presenting what um, I guess opportunities came up that you found valuable in uh, being a part of the summit. Yeah, I can definitely speak to that from an in-person perspective. Um, so there's um, a mixer that I don't know how this year summit is going to look, but um, in 2019 there was a mixer um, in the evening as well as social events kind of leading up to summit um, and a couple of sort of a sort of a soft finish to summit um, with an event um, the day after as well. And those were really great opportunities to just network, um, even the poster sessions, being able to chat. Uh, with folks and we definitely had a lot of people who came up to us after our presentation and still were engaging with us um, and I can say that there are multiple people that I met um, even at my first summit in 2018 that I'm still in touch with today um, so just being able to have some of those more informal conversations outside of the uh, presentation sessions was really, really valuable. Cool. Thanks. Yeah, with the virtual, I think it was a little bit more difficult, but you made a really interesting space of like, you could go in and individually chat with people. Um, I know that there are names that I recognize that I popped in been like, hey, it's been a while since I've seen you, but also sending an email feels a little bit weird because that's not the relationship we have. So it was nice just to say like a quick hello to people through like, especially when you end up in the same panel or within the same presentation, just being able to like privately message people to say like, hey, how's it going? I haven't seen you in so long. So good to see you here. Like was really helpful for me. Um, and the summit was a really good team building activity for us of like how to work together with each other. It was the first conference we had ever presented at as a team of three people and kind of learning each other's styles and doing that work has like really helped us out with the other presentations we've done since then. Uh, for example, AIDS 2022 is coming up next week and we have some stuff there. And I think that the summit was like the easiest training wheels <laughs> to like put on for kind of the more intimidating conferences like that. So for us just learning how to work with each other and then having like a knowing that the community we're coming to is really supportive anyway um was very very helpful awesome yeah that's great to hear thanks mac thank you finn um i do have a question that came in around if one's proposal has been refused is there any way to get feedback to resubmit this year yes um definitely just reach out to me um i will let you know that um the decisions on um what 
uh, presentations get chosen um, is made by a committee um, of a diverse range of folks um, interested in like volunteering to do this work with us at CBRC. Um, and it's a group of about like 13 or 14 of us. And so, um, and we really have to think about like the time capacity uh, of the summit, virtual and in-person. Um, and some years we get close to like 60 uh, proposals. So if your um, proposal doesn't get selected, it could be a number of reasons. It could be a number of reasons why. And But if you are interested in like getting feedback from um, as to uh, more, more particularly like um, what, how you could like reframe this work for future years or things like that, definitely just reach out to me and I can, um, I can do my best in seeing what we can offer in terms of feedback. Um, good news is that I have figured out how to share the sound on this video by Tara. Uh, so I'm quickly going to scroll through to see if there's any questions I haven't answered, and then I'm going to share this video with sound for folks. University of Montreal. Sorry. Hi, my name is Tara. I'm a postdoctoral fellow at. Could people hear that? Yeah, okay, cool. University of Montreal School of Public Health. And I do research on mental health issues and cannabis use across LGBTQI plus youth in Quebec. I presented at last year's summit, uh, which was in Zoom, and the theme really spoke to our lab. So it was disrupt and reconstruct. So our research lab is really concerned uh, with deconstructing norms about uh, cannabis use among LGBTQI plus youth. So a lot of research tends to stigmatize youth who use cannabis and tends to portray them as lacking agency in their cannabis use. So it was really important for us to destigmatize cannabis use and to recenter the narrative on cannabis users themselves who could speak about the negative and positive aspects of cannabis use on their mental health. So reflecting on that in, in connection to the theme really allowed us to think about how we can disrupt norms and disrupt stigma and reconstruct other ways of thinking about um, cannabis use uh, within academic research. So we had very interesting conversations presenting uh, at, um, at the panel, because I think what's unique about the summit is that there's a lot of different people uh, from various, um, from various um, areas that, uh, that can have these uh, intersectional conversations, which uh, often were confined to either academia or community work. And it's really, really interesting to be able to bridge those two academic researchers and a community based um workers from all kinds of um all kinds of different uh, organizations so for example we had a, a very interesting conversation with uh, someone who worked uh, in um, in a more social work based uh, organization uh, which allowed us to think a little bit of a blind spot in uh, our academic research and little get out of this little ivory tower which i think is so one amazing thing that the summit does, and um, it allowed speaking to, to uh, speaking at the summit and presenting uh, with a panel of people who work on similar issues uh, really allowed us to think about some dilemmas we had with our research. So, for example, we were really concerned about at the same time destigmatizing but not glamorizing cannabis use. So we had uh, very interesting uh, discussions that allowed us to really nuance um, this uh, this dilemma. Uh, that uh, that we had. So I think the uh, I think what's very interesting when you present at the summit and when you prepare a proposal uh, for the summit is to think about what you want to get out of it, what kind of conversations uh, you want to get out of it. So it's not just a matter of presenting your research and your results, but of advancing some questions that we have. I think all as researchers, as community based workers, we all have uh, ongoing questions, ongoing dilemmas. So I think it's really interesting to take the summit as an opportunity to be able to uh, further those discussions. And I think the theme of the summit, which is 
pushing possibilities really allow us to do that. I really appreciate um, appreciate the way that, that the theme is phrased. We can really rethink together um, about different possibilities of doing research, of bridging academia and community-based, uh, of different community-based research organizations, uh, of really furthering ways to uh, think about health, uh, health issues, mental health issues, uh, different health issues across the various organizations. I think it's a very interesting uh, opportunity to have those um, of bridging those uh, those discussions. So in the in submitting your proposal, I think it's interesting to think about what you want to get out of it, uh, what questions you would like to have answered, and um, also the eternal struggle is to summarize the research. So we always have so much going on, uh, so little time to speak about it. And uh, it's I would say that it could be very interesting to just interesting and maybe more um, efficient to focus on one aspect of the research instead of trying to go over everything. So, for example, we focused on two or three emerging themes of our research, but we, of course, did not address the entirety of uh, our analysis. So I think it's uh, it, it's uh, it's difficult to summarize everything and then to just address um, one major or uh, one or two major areas that you would like to present to the summit. Um, I think uh, it it's always a, a good thing to time, uh, practicing and time the presentation to before presenting to be able to uh, get everything you want uh, across. Um, but I really uh, encourage you to present to the summit. I think it's a really interesting opportunity to uh, have discussions. It's not intimidating. It's really an opportunity to exchange, uh, to learn from each other, uh, and to create bridges. So I had uh, some people reach out to me after the panel, some people who I'm still in contact contact with uh, who work um, who work on cannabis use and mental health issues too across LGBTQI plus uh, youth, uh, but who have different perspectives or who work in different organizations. So I think it's also a really interesting opportunities uh, to uh, to network. I had that opportunity even with presenting on Zoom, so I can't imagine what it would be like uh, to do that in person. So uh, feel free to reach out if uh, you have any questions. And I really look forward to uh, reading all the presentations and uh, hearing you guys uh, at the summit, guys, girls, and all the beautiful humans who are going to present at the summit. Thank you. Cool. Um, so, uh, well, thank you, Tara, for giving us that video and for sharing that insight. Um, just as we're wrapping up, um, I do have a couple more things. So. One question um, that I have in the chat is what percentage of applicants usually have the proposal selected for the summit? Um, and it's, it's hard to say, I guess it's anywhere from 25 to 40%. This year, of course, we do have a bigger opportunity for um, submissions being selected because we're doing both in-person and virtual. Um, so it's really hard for me to give a percentage on how many will get chosen because I also don't know at this point how many will, uh, how many uh, submissions will even be submitted in the first place. Um, but I will say that if you have a presentation that connects well with our theme and uh, it's uh, speaking to queer trans health in some way, um, your chances are good. Um, I also want to mention that um, at CBRC, we do offer opportunities for scholarships and sponsorships to attend the summit um, for presenters and attendees. And so if you are someone who uh, needs more support financially in terms of uh, attending summit or participating in the summit, um, you can also apply for um, the summit 2022 scholarship um, via the form, um, which I will now, uh, well, the link will be shared in the chat, but you can also find the link to this on our summit webpage, cbrc.net slash summit. Um, um, and I think that's all. Yeah, if you have any other questions, you can let me know. Um, you can find me, you can reach me um, over email. I'm happy to answer any other questions related to summit. Um, there's the link in the chat for uh, summit scholarship forms. Um, again, I have taken note of everyone who has asked me for the um, the list of the questions of the proposals, which I will send that to you. We'll also um, put that for, um, document on our webpage as well, so you can find it there if I don't send it to you, but I will send it to you. Um, and that's it. 
thank you, everyone. Thank you, Mac. Thank you, Finn and Tara, who's not here, but thank you for the video, Tara. And I'm going to wish everyone good luck in submitting a proposal. Um, and again, reach out to me if you need help. And I will see you at the summit, either as an attendee or a presenter um, or in some other capacity. Um, thank you, folks. We'll see you soon. Bye.